And then I said, why is why? And I just slapped myself on the head. Pretty good, right? What do you mean it's a part? Who the hell are you? Oh, hello there. Was just having a chat with my parents. Once again, trying to explain what I do for a living. But let's not worry about that because my word. There was so much wrestling on television last night. I started spinning around like a goober because I could not believe it. But in terms of this video, that's right. We are going to take the finger of power and we're going to give the good bits of the bad bits of down for WWE Smackdown which is also the go-home show for Extreme Rules, where, yes, I do believe Bray Wyatt is going to re-debut. We're going to talk about it. Hurt my neck a little bit. Let's up those doubts. Triple H was in the ring to start SmackDown. What? He was also doing that face he loves to do where it looks like he's really mad that he left the oven on and his anger is towards the oven, even though the oven is an inanimate object. This was all because it was the season premiere of SmackDown, which never makes any sense because wrestling never ends. It just goes on to the end of time. And he also just said, there will be a time where you believe everything is over, but that's where it's beginning or something like that. I thought about it for ages. I was like, nope, that doesn't make any sense. Unless he's talking about people going bald, because then you lose your hair and you do have to start again. So trips, thanks very much. The most important part of all of this is that he had a massive QR code on his microphone. And if you did scan that, you got a video with a bunch of pigs in it. But don't even worry about that, because there was a video later on that basically said, duh, 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 the white rabbit is going to be an extreme rule. So going back to what I said in the intro, yes. I do believe it's Bray Wyatt, so now you have a reason to tune in, and I think that's doubly good, because for a while there, premium live events have kind of just felt like extensions of the television show, but now it looks like they're going back to being a big deal. We also had our new commentary team of Michael Cole and Wade Barrett, because once again it was the season premiere, I just want to say, I think they did a great job, and yes, I'm a big fan of Bad News Barrett. It makes me happy. I was also ecstatic too because the bloodline then made their way to the ring. <laughs> Sami Zayn is just so beloved by the crowd. He's so beloved by me. I'm pretty sure if I showed it to my mother, she'd be like, oh my gosh, he's so beloved, which doesn't even make any sense. And as I've said before, you can see where this is going. When it does happen, I'm going to cry. Roman obviously then got on the microphone and was all like, oh man, you've got to acknowledge me. And do not forget that acknowledge means to accept or admit the existence of. So Roman Reigns is basically going, please, please say you can see me in the ring. So he's insane. Before we could do anything to Logan Paul's music hit, and out came this guy. And as ever, he was just booed. At one point, all the fans were going, Logan sucks. So why don't we just turn him heel and be done with it? Clearly they must have known this was going to happen, or Roman Reigns called an audible, because he was like, oh man, yeah, people used to boo me, but now I'm the greatest of all time. When Paul Heyman took over and started to say things like, oh, you're the Mr. T of Cindy Lauper of your generation. Now I know what he was getting at, but this ain't gonna help. Also got a sneaky promotional dig in there for Anderson Silva versus Jake Paul, so make sure your eyes sees that one. Well, Paul Heyman was all like, look, I am going to give you some credit because you are an online celebrity standing up to the tribal chief. And I don't think somebody like Jordan Peterson is gonna do that. And I thought about it, I was like, yep. <laughs> That's what I want for the next Saudi Arabia show. <laughs> Jordan Peterson versus Roman Reigns. Logan then reported and it went like this. Boo, boo, hiss, hiss, we don't like you. Although he was here to cause shenanigans because he was like, oh man, hey, Roman Reigns, I like the fact you're in charge of your group. Or is it actually Jay Uso? Uso lost his mind at that because he is a hothead when eventually Roman also started to glare at him. I swear, Jay Uso deserves some kind of award because as soon as Ray started to do this, he was like, oh man, what have I done? It then exploded and it looked like they were going to come to blows when of all people, Sammy got on the microphone and was like, guys, everybody calm down. Jay Uso didn't mean it. He's a good guy. So that's right. He was defending the person that is always on his ass. Poor, poor beating heart. Sammy also said that Logan was going to get smashed at Crown Jewel and then did the whole, you're just a YouTuber, want to be pro wrestler. And all of a sudden, I was on Logan Paul's side because I've had that for the last three years. You do know that human beings can be more than one thing. They did go off here, though, and dropped all the lines when Paul just walked away. And that was a bit strange. And I tell you, all this did was re-cement the fact that the bloodline are one of the best things in all of wrestling at the moment. And they're all 
Rumble just kicking ass. And yes, really, this should end with Sami Zayn beating Roman Reigns, but that's not going to happen. And instead, as already clarified, water will come out of my seeing devices when they do screw him over. But what a moment it will be. Up. This all continued too, because given that Solar Sako was already out there, he was going to be taking on Ricochet. They basically both went nuts here too and just did all the moves while running at 100 miles an hour. I mean, at one point, Rick was in the air, so Solo went, nope. And he just punched him. Sokoa was so furious that he couldn't get the upper hand. He actually went to get a chair at one point, but the ref was like, no, you're not allowed to use that, you absolute dingus. And this is when Ricochet came back with like a running knee. And you can kind of feel like WWE is going to push him at some stage, but just not right at the moment. When they do, believe you me, it's gonna rock. It was this damn catching in space thing that caught up with him though, ironically. And I've been telling you for the last few weeks, I could see this was getting more popular in wrestling because Rick, ridiculous went for the shooting star pressed and Sokoa caught him gave him the spinning solo whatever the hell it's called and he pinned him for the one two three and surprise surprise because ricochet got hit with the most devastating move or one of the most devastating moves but not the most devastating move i didn't go well you absolutely suck because you lost no i was like well he got beaten by a great maneuver I am giving this an up. Also, that's Solar Sokoa, man. He on fire. This whole thing then continued too because we zoomed to the back. That's right, we were with the bloodline again. Because Sami Zayn was just beaming with pride as he acted like, well, I trained Solar Sokoa. And this is when Jay Uso went off again. I was like, damn it, Jay, you need professional help. Zayn responded by saying, man, you're such a hothead, which is an understatement to say the least. This is when Roman Reigns was done with it. He's like, man, I gave birth to you. Here you are running around. You're always so damn angry. So you know what? You're not my problem anymore. Your Sami Zayn. So it's clear what we're doing here. It's all going to be a ruse. Obviously, it's going to look like Sami Zayn is more tight with the bloodline. And the last second, Jay Uso will beat him up and everybody will join in. But again, that just works so well. And now Sam is in charge of Jay. This one is going to go off the rails. This also resulted in a six-man tag match because Zayn and the Usa walk around the corridor like kids pushing each other like, you idiot, now we're in trouble with Dad. When the New Day walked up to them and just went, <laughs> you guys suck, so we're going to get a six-man tag later. Right after this too, we got a big old debut because Hit Road came to the ring and just when they were about to do some kind of promo or something, a bunch of masked dudes attacked them and beat them up. There was also a blonde woman there, and I was like, well, that looks like Selena Vega with blonde hair, because it was Selena Vega with long hair. And after they had absolutely wrecked Hit Row, they took off their masks, and we've got a call up from NXT. Because it was Legado Del Fantasma, and they were all like, oh man, we own SmackDown now, so they must have paid a lot of money for that. And while this was short and sweet, it achieved two things. One, these guys did get a pop, so people knew who they were, and straight away they seemed like badasses. But two, Hit Row finally have a feud. I mean, I've been a bit worried they've been playing second fiddle recently. And it kind of feels like they may play second fiddle again, but we shall wait and see. Nice and simple, but effective, this. Get it up. We then got more White Rabbit stuff, and hilariously, I saw someone on Twitter after Legada Del Fantasma had David saying, oh my gosh, they're the White Rabbit. And I was like, this is why we're not allowed nice things. <laughs> that is just the worst take ever. When it was time for Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi taking on Sonya Deville and Xia Li. Now I'm a little bit worried because we continue to play roulette with the women's tag team division. Because why has Raquel Rodriguez teamed up with Shotzi? And why is Sonya teaming up with Zaya? I mean, are they even going for the titles? I have no clue. And honestly, this got about two minutes. Raquel hit the big power bomb. She got the one, two, three. The commentators were all like, ah, oh, isn't it great that Rodriguez and Shotzi are like friends in a team now? I looked the other way like, I don't know, is it? I'm not sure. I mean, what feels like has happened here is that Aaliyah got injured, so we moved her one step across, and then we moved Raquel, and we got Shotzi, and we put her there. And it just doesn't seem to have any coherence to it. Like, you need to have some reason for these things to be happening. And it is nice they're being featured on TV. But Sonya Deville especially, I think, would benefit from being in a singles feud. Maybe with Raquel Rodriguez. I gotta give it a down. We then saw the Brawling Brutes preparing for Sheamus' main event match with Gunther later for the Intercontinental Championship. And this felt like such a big deal. As did Ronda Rousey versus Liv Morgan, because we had a video package for their match at Extreme Rules. When it was done, I was like, yep, I want to see it. If you listened closely after this too, you would have heard this. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Because that's right. 
Out came Carrion, Crust, and Scarlet. Now, somebody online decided that all my jibes at Carrion's clock, not a euphemism, meant I don't like him, and that's not true at all. I think he has all the tools, and if he has a good performance this weekend, he's gonna smash it. This didn't go to plan at all, though, because when they did get to the ring and they did their pose, all of a sudden, Drew McIntyre rose from the depths. I mean, where the hell did he come from? It really was as if he'd been teleported in by the Starship Enterprise. He just went absolutely crazy to him and he put a strap on to carry and cross his arm, because of course that is the stipulation at Extreme Rules, and he just started to beat the crap out of him. And even when the security guards were like, Drew, Drew, would you stop? He just grabbed one of these fools, threw him into Barry Barricade. That kind of did screw the Scottish warrior though, because then Carrion was on the attack. And this really confused me, because I was like, Drew McIntyre beat up Carrion Cross, but then Carrion Cross beat up Drew McIntyre. So now neither of them has any momentum. So who the hell is going to win on Saturday night? This was nice and simple though, and just told you, look, it's going to be super brutal at the premium live event. And this is where I think the White Rabbit is going to pop up. That's right, I think Bray Wyatt is going to get involved in this match. I have made my prediction. Check out more of my predictions on the Extreme Rules prediction video. But yeah, two big guys punching each other. Get up. Michael Cole also called Cross a calculated lunatic during this. Because I'm an idiot, I started laughing. Like somebody on a calculator just furiously pushing the buttons. Idiot. But they got some crazy Viking Raiders vignette after this, which did greatly tease that Sarah Logan may be back with the team, because there was a woman's voice. And basically it was all like, oh man, let's go to Valhalla. And I was like, I thought Valhalla was like a Viking's graveyard. I have absolutely no idea. But don't you just love that Vince McMahon has left? And Triple H is leaning into this Vikings thing even more. It's basically looking at you right down the camera saying, look, they're Vikings, all right? Flub you. We then got such a good reveal after this, because of course the whole point of this six-man tag match involving the bloodline was them being all like, <laughs> New Day, you ain't gonna be able to find a partner because everybody hates you. And then do you know who they went and got? Flippin' Braun Strowman. So that is that. He has been booked tremendously ever since he has returned. And when his music hit, we cut to the Usos who were like, damn it, Sammy, this was all your fault. Kinda was. He made the challenge. We also had so much story during this because it did result in Jay Uso and Sammy Dane just having a massive falling out mid-match, which basically cost them the thing. But the commentators also kept going, oh hey, don't forget the Usos right now are trying to get the tag team record of how long they've held those damn things. And who owns that at the moment? It's the New Day. So it stands to reason that Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston probably want to stop them. Now, yes, you can go, wait a minute. Didn't the New Day once lose to the Usos and the stipulation? was they were never allowed to fight again for the championship. I think that's the case, but look, that was the old regime, and that is a really good narrative when it does come to those titles. So let's just do it anyway. This all came together as well, because at the end, when Jay and Sam were having an argument, Braun Strowman just tagged in and went, rah, and he ran at them, and he hit Jay so hard, he went flying over out of the announce table into Michael Cole. But given that the New Day had also made the tag, they hit their stomp backbreaker thingamajig, and they got the pin on Jay Uso, so now they can come out next week and say, we just beat the tag team champions, give us a damn match. They also come away from this going, oh no, maybe the bloodline is in trouble. So it just gets a massive round of applause. And it was a super fun match that was so well structured and so well thought out. You should go and watch this if you're not planning to. Getting it up. I'm also pretty sure that Michael Cole is in love with Braun Strowman. Because at one point he was just saying, oh my God, he's so big, so agile, but so quick. I've never seen a big man move that fast before. And if you had put like lovey-dovey music behind it, you totally would have bought it. And then Max Dupree lost his damn mind. I mean, what the flub is going on? I mean, we really did decide to do this as soon as we had decided to do it because we were in the back with the Maximum Male models. And before they could do anything, Max zoomed in, he beat the crap out of them. And just as Maxime was about to go, Max, what have you done? He said, my name is not Maximilian, it is LA Knight. So no, none of that makes sense whatsoever, but he probably will do far better as LA Knight. I mean, they're pretty good at NXT. But all I ask of you, WWE, look at me. I'm bowing down like some kind of schmuck. Please keep the Maximum Male models on my TV. I know they're goofy and they know they're stupid, but they do such a good job and they entertain me. So please don't let them leave. We then did get to our main event and flub me sideways. 
It was Sheamus versus Gunther round two for the Intercontinental Championship. And I ain't getting to this stupid war of words. People going, I think the first one was better. Well, I think the second one was better. I don't care about that. I'm glad that we got the original. And I'm definitely glad we got the sequel because they just decided to kick each other's ass. You have got to go and see it. I mean, as soon as the bell rang, they were just chopping and hitting and clothesline each other to the point I think they'd gone, what really is on the inside of a human? I want to find out. When they fought to the outside, Sheamus just grabbed Gunther and he kept throwing him into Barry Barricade over and over again to the point I was like, well, that dude is going to be bruised tomorrow. And yes, I am referring to Barry. Gunther didn't like that, so he slammed Sheamus into Tony Turnbuckle, but he went for the metal bit because he's crazy. <laughs> when that didn't work, they just started laying into each other again. I mean, this was carnage. I mean, soon they were just telling the other one, well, you hit me. No, you hit me. Damn it, you hit me. So Sheamus got his big beats in there. And when he was doing this, the fans just came unglued. So I don't know how this happens, and I do not care. But Sheamus is just mega over. Gunther is like a super duper mega heel, and they just having this feud that we are going to talk about for years. And have we done anything complex? No, we have not. This was followed by a second white rope noise, which ended with a tremendous near fall, especially because then Gunther got up and he just gives Sheamus the power bomb. And I actually said out loud, this is like Thanos versus Juggernaut. It then got even better because Sheamus was able to lock in the Cloverleaf. And there was this one moment when it looked like Gunther was going to tap. And he did do this before he was able to grab the bottom rope. Now, everybody erupted for this, but as it turns out, there's basically an unspoken rule that if you are gonna submit using your hand, you have to go one, two, three. Otherwise, it's known as like a Brazilian tap or something, and the referee is allowed to use their own discretion. Now, I get that it's slightly ridiculous, because it's like me going, I quit. <laughs> Not, but honestly, it doesn't matter because they pulled this off so well, and they also made the story clear, and it pissed everybody off. And not an, oh man, I'm so mad at WWE booking. No, like, I'm so mad at you, Gunther, how dare you? I mean, it felt so different, especially for WWE. And this is when Imperium and the Brawling Brutes were there and they started having a big fight. But in the fracas, Ludwig had obviously gone and got the shillelagh. He passed it to Gunther and just as Sheamus was about to hit the bro kick, Gunther got the weapon, he twonked him on the head and he pinned him to retain his intercontinental title. And once again, this wasn't like, I can't believe we used a weapon to end this. It was like, damn it, you horrible, horrible man. I can't believe you cheated. So I cannot tell you how well done this was because there was a real feeling of the arena that Sheamus had been screwed. And of course it ties into extreme rules because now the Brawling Brutes can win that good old fashioned Donnybrook or whatever the hell we're calling it. But this honestly is one of the best TV main events WWE has done in ages. It just ticked every single box and Gunther's reign is becoming something to note too. And after this, Sheamus is just going to be the biggest hero of all time. So it's getting an up, a solid up, a great up, a double up. Honestly, it just, I got, that's it. I'm just, I'm just going to give it a round of applause. One for the ages. Which also brought us to the end of SmackDown, and we're not even going to muck around here. It does get an up. Now, there are a couple of angle choices that I personally didn't agree with, but in terms of everything and how it flows together, well, I am just having a jolly old good time. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about SmackDown and what do you think about Extreme Rules later on this evening. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head on to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Follow us on social media. That's what it's called. And also, Rampage and Battle of the Belts Ups and Downs is going to be up later or now, depending when you're watching this. Check it out. My name is Ivan Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. See you soon.